So once again, good morning and good afternoon. And for some of you, perhaps even good, good night or whatever, you know, because we are from very different time zones together. My name is Danica. I am president of Blade School of Management, where our dear professor, Mikhail Liado, or Jado, what you would say in his language, is, um, uh, is also a visiting professor. Otherwise, he's teaching at ES Spain. Uh, but he is teaching in many places around the world. You have today, really with, with you and with us, a great global personality. We have people who applied for this, uh, for this event from 25 countries, from Albania, Australia, Belarus, Belgium, Bosnia, Canada, Croatia, of course, Slovenia, Romania, Russia, to United States and to United Arab Emirates. I could not go, I could not mention all the countries, but um, it is absolutely fantastic to have you with us. And uh, I hope that one day I shall be able to greet you in Bled in Slovenia on our terrace, because this is one of the nicest places in the world. Liado Mikel comes, uh, as I mentioned already, from Spain. He is a very interesting profile having because he was for many years CEO of different companies and he received even the prize like a, a Spain best executive in 2000 by the Spanish Business Association. And he was um, uh, president of CEO of Sara Lee Baker Europe. He was CEO of Bimbo Spain and Portugal. He was a vice president marketing and sales from Bimbo Spain and Portugal. He was working from, as a manager for PepsiCo and some other companies. He has a consulting company. He's advisor and mentor to different CEOs around the world. But of course, his favorite, I believe at least, his favorite topic is teaching, strategic thinking for a new future. And that is the topic today. I would like only to tell you that we have in our school, uh, we are focused on executive education, but we have one seminar for young managers. And this is starting this year, face to face, 1st of September. And it's also a very international group of people. So look at our website and you will see <laughs> what we have to offer and what we have to do. And as I said, I hope to receive you one day at our place. So thank you very much and enjoy the lecture with our dear guest speaker, Mikel. Goodbye. Thank you very much, Danica. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. It's a pleasure to be connected. Uh, the possibility that technology gives us to be remotely connected keeps me fascinating day after day. So let's go for this 60 minutes connection where we will have this strategic thinking for a new future uh, session that will last 45 minutes and with Q&A uh, before the closing that I've, uh, we have designed that in that way. During the session, I will invite you to ask questions and there is a Q&A um, uh, uh, place in, 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 on your screen. So write down any questions you may, they come to your mind. And uh, at the same time during the session, I'm gonna be asking you a couple of questions and I will ask uh, um, to, 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 to tell me a couple of words and I will comment on them. So uh, during the question, so I will be answering uh, during the lecture. Should any question remain unanswered, it will be a pleasure to answer them later, either through the school or you may contact me directly. Here you have my, my data on the screen. The intent of the session is to inspire all of us, uh, you and me and everybody in front of a new reality and a new future. I have prepared the presentation in four blocks, um, leadership, immediacy, future and digital, which I consider are four key drivers for the new world. Uh, at the end of the lecture, I will recommend you a book that reminds us that thinking long term is not easy. And that requires, requires a true effort. Uh, we all have a natural invitation to look for immediate solutions to problems that we have today. So I'm uh, more thinking about today than thinking about tomorrow, more of the short term. So that's why the importance of reinforcing in this session that we have to begin to reimagine, to rethink, and to think about the future starting today. 
So um, let's go for it. Um, let me, uh, by the way, you're gonna have copies of these uh, slides uh, of the session and the slides itself. So um, don't, don't feel obliged to write everything uh, from the start. So um, thank you very much for attending and glad to know that you are from so many different countries. All right, so let me start with one concept. As Danita was saying, I spent uh, quite a few time, around 10 years uh, with PepsiCo. Uh, PepsiCo Foods. I was uh, based in Barcelona and then I was going to the United States in the New York area, New Jersey area for a couple of years there with my family. And I didn't meet him personally, but uh, uh, I read about John Schooley. John Schooley was the guy that was hired by Steve Jobs to build Apple. And they got some differences, but they made a very, a very, very attractive team. And one thing that I read from John School is that concept that it, it, it says return on equity on the screen. Those that come from finance may uh, identify it like et equity, but he offered or suggested all of us to change the word E by E uh, experience. So he, instead of saying return on equity, he was talking about return on experience. His message was, it's not an important experience that we have. It's not important. You know, we can have a lot of uh, education, a lot of experience, fantastic, but it's not important. The important thing is what we do with the, with the experience we have. So what we do with it, that, what's the return on experience? Today, you have chosen to be here for this hour, and I, I'm thankful for that. Let's try to make that a new experience. Let's get something from that. It's not just learning and listening to Mikel Yadó and the different questions from people. It's about, come on, force yourself in a way to do something with it. I hope that you will get some message in the middle of all the slides that may spark you the most and then try to do something with it, with yourself, with your customers, with your boss, with your company, with your thinking. So go, go for that and let's uh, build a good return on experience for you. When I started teaching, as Danica was saying, I spent almost 25 years in the executive world and I started teaching, um, one challenge came to my mind. How come I can't talk in front of people that may know more about their business than I will ever know? You know, for instance, I was coming from the food industry, so I felt very comfortable talking about the food industry. What, but, but what about banking or what about insurance? Or what about health? What about pharma companies? And then I found this thought from Socrates that, let me tell you, it relieved me a lot. So he, he was saying, he's saying, as you can read, he can, I cannot teach anybody anything. I can only make them think. And then I found my, my place over there. I was saying, yeah, I'm not, I, I don't have to, to know more about everything because it's gonna be impossible because there's so much knowledge in, in, the, in the room and in that sense now with uh, you being there that uh, it's impossible for me to teach something about it, but the thing that I can do is help you to think. So this session is gonna be uh, asking you to think and inviting you to do reflection about the different concepts I'm gonna be sharing with you. I found this thought from Ortega Gasset. Ortega Gasset, uh, since I'm coming from Spain, he's a philosopher here in, in Spain, and I like it very much because I think it it's very, fits very well with the situation we're living these days. We can't postpone life until we're ready. The most characteristic future, feature of life is its urgency. So it's not that, well, let's, let's the world get better or life get smoother or no, come on, you know, we cannot wait. It's, it's now this year that we have this age, this synergy and uh, seniority, and we have to make this, we cannot wait. So let's use this, this situation, I mean, to realize that we cannot wait for the, the future to come. I mean, we are, we are there. Um, I'm placing here the picture of these two guys having conversation. Um, uh, today, we're going to be having three conversations. The conversation that I'm having with each one of you, even I don't see your faces, but I, can, I feel you over there. And this, this one thing, the other conversation from the questions and, and comments that you're going to be making, I'm going to be giving some answers and you may get some insights from these comments that I'm going to be doing from your words. But the third conversation you're gonna be having, and to me, this is the most important one, is the conversation you're gonna be having with yourself. That conversation, your, your head is gonna be boiling, 
new ideas, new thoughts in your mind, and maybe you will not have time to share your questions, your comments with a, with a group. Don't miss these comments. Write them down. Uh, don't, don't miss it. Keep it. Not because I'm in front of you. I have the truth. I, I'm in front of you sharing with you my thoughts, my ideas to ignite some kind of inspiration for you. But it's this conversation that having with yourself, it's very important. We got to remember that we are the only person we're going to be with all our lives. The rest of the people are going to be there from time to time. But we are the only ones we're going to be with ourselves all, all our lives. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a, a year. So we have to have the, the ability to have this kind of conversation and trusting ourselves because we are the person we're going to be more time with along our time. So don't miss those concepts that, in, that come to your mind because of the words that we're going to be sharing today. Let me introduce you two gentlemen. Here we have Mr. Adam Smith and Professor Alfred Chandler. Adam Smith, as, uh, as you may know, the, he wrote the book, The Wealth of Nations. In this book, you could find the theory of the invisible hand, meaning that markets regulate by themselves. You have uh, different situations in China, of course, Donald Trump, Boris Johnson, then Europe, then Spain, Slovenia, uh, all the countries, Australia, what's going on in Argentina. Of course, then what we do, we react to what we, we understand what's going on, we read it, and then we act based on what we see over there. So things, a lot of things happen to us. But then many years later, we have Professor Alfred, Alfred D. Chandler Jr. He was a professor at Harvard Business School. And I like very much, I like very much the theory that he wrote. He wrote the theory of the visible hand. The visible hand is the hand that we all have to make decisions, to write contracts, to buy companies, to sell companies, to write prices, to, to decide what we do with, with our time, with our mind, and all these things. So this session has a lot to do with the visible hand. It's not so much about what is happening to us. It's reading that, but at the same time, taking action and doing something with it. So call to action. All right. So I invite you as well, as I did with the return on experience, to do something with it. Come on, we, it's not about life happening to us. It's, it's, it's about we making things happen for life. We, in our favor, try to, to, to take action, to be the, 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 the star of the show in terms of the actions we take. So let's go for the visible hand. Certainly the future has come suddenly. 10 years, things that we to, should have t taken, you know, 10 years took 15 days. I mean, see now all of us connecting here with Zoom uh, was not probably going to happen, you know, uh, three years ago or, or even three months ago. Now we, we are managed with that. So it has come very suddenly, very, very fast. And certainly there are some dark clouds. Uh, uh, maybe it was a storm uh, a few days ago. Now it's getting a cloud. There's a light at the, at the end, very good news to know that Slovenia is getting back to normality, even though with some precautions. In Spain, we are still in quarantine. I don't know in your countries that uh, you have different situations, but certainly it, it's a time of uncertainty. It's a time complex, complex to understand what's going on. No, not defined timeline, you know, peaks and valleys, and certainly it's impacting everybody. It's, it's global. So that's a reality that we are facing here. So, let me ask you the first question for you to feel free to free up your fingers, to type, you know, what word comes to your mind in the current situation? So what I'm gonna be doing is that I'm gonna, today is gonna be sending me uh, some, the words that you are writing down in the Q&A. So write down your words over there. And, uh, you know, in a couple of slides, I will, I will check my WhatsApp and I'll see what today shares with me. So let me continue with that while you're thinking about, because as I said, it's about thinking, it's about reflection, it's about return on experience, it's about visible hand. So go for that. Well, uh, as I said at the beginning, I organized the presentation in these four letters, this concept life. So it's, for me, it's a pleasure to introduce you this concept to you. And, and I consider these are four uh, key drivers for a new world and the new future. So L stands for leadership. I stands for immediacy, F stands for future, and E stands for digital. 
And I found this acronym that it, it, it's helped us to have a sequential, sequential thinking on our strategic thinking. So we have to think and reflect about leadership, reflect about what do we now with immediacy, reflect in, re, uh, re, uh, referring the, to the future, that we have to think about the future now. I'm gonna be reinforcing that custom concept. And certainly the world is becoming more digital. So it's something that we have, we don't have to miss. So in our, in our, in our executive life, thinking about leadership in immediacy, future and digital are four key drivers for this new world. So let me, let me build upon each one of the, of the concepts. Leadership. Um, I've, I've been involved in many, many discussions and conversations these days, as you have been doing. And let me tell you, out of all of the, all the things, I, I was thinking, well, Miguel, we have to prepare for the future. What about the resources? What about people? What about my... One thing that I see in common is that it's the time for leadership. It's time for, I like very much the word mindset. So the kind of mindset, the, the kind of lenses we use to see the situation where we are experiencing right now will make a difference, will make certainly a difference. That's why I picked that those seven words here that I see that the kind of mindset that I think will make a difference, making a difference in different sectors and companies is courage, resilience, calm, be able to be calm and to be, be able to deliver calm to people. You know, when rough times come, you know, it's a, it's a time to, to be, you know, able to give tranquility and say, you know, and set any to people. Adaptability, I mean, you have to be adaptable, yeah. And creativity, being creative, it's a, I think that it's one thing that it's common in the world now, these reigniting our, our minds, you know, we have to think different. We have to find new solutions. Uh, something new is happening. Uh, decision making. I think it's a time for making decisions and fast. So now I, I like to think that it's like we've been, all we have been doing right now, until now it's been training, but now it's the, the final game. I mean, it's a Champions League. It's a, come on, we have to go, give our best. Now it's a time to prove ourselves that all we learned in the past, we're ready to cope with a situation like this. And stress management, I will re, we'll comment on this coming in a few seconds. Let me get back to the point of mindset. I picked, as you can see, the picture of New York City here with a Freedom Tower uh, on, the, on the left side. And let me, let me share with you an experience that I had. And in October 2000, October 11, 2001, I flew to New York City. Just one month later, up after the collapse of the Twin Towers. I remember that we were kind of Scared, you know, uh, scared with uh, some kind of, uh, I don't know, uh, you know, what, what's going on with, the, with the, the fact that the Twin Towers, uh, you know, collapsed. And I remember in that plane that maybe there, are, there were 300 seats. We were 50 people there. I was walking by the plane and realizing that we had faces of kind of uh, un uncertainty in our faces. And I got into the, in New York City. And I got into through customs. I don't know if how many times or if you had the opportunity to go to New York. And so I know that some of you are from the U.S. And let me tell you, the, 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 the guys in customs are tough guys in New York City. I have been traveling there for every month for several years because I was working for American companies. And one of the things that I, I got into there, and I remember the guy in customs, he told me that the, the guy with uh, the police guy with all these belts, you know, full of, you know, all the, all the things that devices that they carry on. The guy told me, thanks for coming back. And I remember that moment like it is today, like it was today. And thanks for coming back. You know, I remember that uh, New York inhabitants were kind of, I don't know, will people come back to my city? Will people come back to my place? You know, it's, it's New York uh, at, uh, at the end of something. And the guy told me, thanks for coming back. I, I, bring, I brought this spirit with me. And I think that now that, for instance, in Spain, we are facing this situation that, you know, that we are one of the most visited countries in the world and we are challenged, challenged by people not coming here. I'm sure that, you know, this is my, 
point of view that you know people come back and we'll thank we will have be able to thank people about coming back so we'll get back to normality these the the wish and the hope and the, what we are fighting and, and uh, going for i i picked the picture of the freedom tower because just uh, maybe 10 years after the collapse of twin towers they have another tower over there you know beautiful you know and and showing the world that we we have the ability to recover so this kind of mindset that i saw in that city in those days the kind of mindset that i like to praise in these uh, days that we are facing uh, different situations let me go for the stress management um this guy is alessandro campagna he's the uh, uh, the guy on the left side you know already know him on the left side, we have Alessandro Campagna. He is the coach of the national team in Italy of water polo. And they made it to the final, well, they, they, they won the, the World Cup in the last edition. And we were together not even one year ago. And I like to uh, recognize Italy in a way because they had a very hard time as uh, New York is having today. So that's why the reason I'm placing these two places in my presentation. And Alessandro, we were in a conference there in, in, in Italy. And, um, and I remember that one of the questions we asked him was, Alessandro, how do you pick your people in your team? Because you made it uh, the, the world championship. And let me tell you, what, can you help us to, because we were talking about leadership and how people you know, perform in high performance teams. And I remember Alessandro giving us a very straight answer. He said, Miguel, we pick up, I pick up players among many good players I have. Of course, they are good players, capabilities, of course. But one of the characteristics I'm looking forward to get from these guys is stress management. People that are able to perform under pressure. I'm going to say it again. People that are able to perform under pressure. He was saying, you play water polo, any game or even the final, and the first minutes, you know, you really, you, you, you feel good and fantastic, but you see the real players, the real high performers in the last five minutes of the game. When, if you score, you may make it, you know, to the championship. If you fail, you can be, you know, in the worst part of, uh, you know, in the dark side of your life. So I need those players that when, you know, we, they're gonna be, we all have, gonna have very hard pressure to perform we perform accordingly. And this comment from Alessandro came to my mind and I want to take it to the moments we are living. These days are getting the best from us and the worst from us. These days are getting the, we see the best from people and the worst from people. People that become very selfish or people that become very, you know, community driven uh, or focused. And it's a tremendous opportunity for these days to learn for us to grow, learn, assess people, see how people are reacting, see how we react to that, he, see how prepared we are to perform at a high level under pressure. So I think that these days are very good for uh, uh, reading ourselves and reading our teams regarding uh, the pressure they are holding. So, you know, let's take advantage of that and think about that. You know, we need these kind of players in companies because the uncertainty is always there. All right, so let me check before going to, to this uh, slide, uh, some questions that I'm reading here at the WhatsApp. The word you're saying, solidarity, change, learning, decision, volatility, innovation, future, uncertainty. Change and uncertainty are most frequent words. All opportunity and crisis appear often also. Thank you very much, Sadeya. Let me make a comment on this. Uh, change change is about life i mean we've been you know in so many programs probably you and uh, and sessions talking about change and well we're thinking well change change but it doesn't go with me or the status quo is doing good enough no change is part of life we cannot stop change we are different people five years ago than three days uh, three three years ago and now we are different people after so many days of quarantine we learned at least in my case i learned to cook a little bit not not fa not fancy, but something. I lead, I, I learned to appreciate the small things. The balcony in my house, you know, it's becoming bigger and bigger every time because you know I thought that it was a small balcony, and I, I appreciate that. So we learned something over there. So you know, change it's 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 also in our mind, and we're going to be talking about with uh, this in a second. And uncertainty. Yes, we can talk uh, for hours about uncertainty, but let me. 
make a point about the certainty. What kind of certainties we have? We have uncertainties here, but we have certainties. Uncertainty is that, as I said, the world is going to become more digital. I know that we, the people that are able to handle pressure, is going to be doing better. I know that courage is important. Yes, I know that decision making is going to be important. Yes, I know that flexibility is going to be crucial. Adaptability. So if I'm adaptable, flexible, I'm digital. Uh, I have more opportunity to survive in the future. Take it at your personal level, your team, your company. So the company that is able to cope with all these things, you know, this is the kind of certainty. So, you know, we may pay attention to the uncertainties. There are many. If I may, it's like the invisible hand. But let's think about the visible hand, those things that, you know, I'm certain about. I need to be close to my people. I need to be there for them. This is certain. I know that in crisis, we need to talk to each other more often. Yes, it's important to be able to give serenity. Yes, it's important to find yourself in this situation. Yes. So, so uncertainty is there, but let's, let's focus a little bit on uncertainty too. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much for your comments. By the way, I, was, I want to try to get some academic stuff here because we are facing a virtual leadership. All of us now we're talking here uh, through the screen. I don't see you, I feel you. And I think that there are moments of true leadership because, you know, one thing I was talking to general manager yesterday of a company and he was telling me, I, I don't know, you know, I, I used to see people in my office and now they are not there, but they are performing. So, I, but I needed to see them in a way to control or to make me feel that, you know, the company was there and now I don't see them, but the things are happening. So he, he was telling me, I don't know if I'm, I'm ready for, for this new world. So <clears throat> based on that, I was thinking about, well, uh, what kind of, what types of leadership we, we may find in the world? And there are many definitions of leadership. You've gone through many of them, but let me pick two ones here that I picked for you. <clears throat> one is transactional leaders, and the other one is transformational leaders. And I, what impressed me a lot, it was I was reading scientifics to think, to talk, talk, about transaction, transaction, transactional leaders and transformational leaders. They were saying that transformational leaders are the type of leadership that is going to make, make a difference in a virtual leadership environment. Initially, I was thinking, if I may, that all the technology, the robotics, uh, all these uh, devices we're using would get as more distant from the human need or human contact scientifics say no they have gone through many interviews you know how it goes and saying transformational qualities the qualities of transformational leaders are more important than ever even more than in a face-to-face -face situation and i felt like sharing that with you by the way transportation transactional leaders are leaders that you pay a salary and you get something in return you don't pay a salary you don't get anything in return remember that for a salary we work but for a project, we give our lives and we give everything. And that's what transformational leaders are able to, to get. It's not just transactional. They have four dimensions, four qualities that I'm gonna be sharing with you for you to have it. In to see system in your company. So let's go for that. The first one, the, the leader uh, these leaders are charismatic all right so um uh today could you tell me if i'm are you uh, hearing me because i got something in my ear pots and i'm not sure if i'm you are listening to me yes can you send me a message here okay all right well um Yes, okay, thank you very much. So these leaders are charismatic. What, what's a charismatic leader? Are, are, thank you very much, Danisa. Um, these are leaders that provoke devotion, provoke loyalty. I mean, there are, there are uh, leaders that they commit to values and they re reinforce the importance of collective mission for the group. This is very good. Of course, we know that charismatic people, you know, there are people that are, they are bored with that, but you can get some of these 
things going on. You can again see try to get the loyalty of people to to emphasize the importance of these values. So charismatic will make a difference. The second one, inspiration. I like very much this word. You know, see see how much power a word may have, just the word itself. <clears throat> They're saying that these guys inspire through feelings and uh, emotions, all right? And they are able to, to, to give a, 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 an enthusiastic vision about the future. So uh, that, you know, they, that, you know, they are confident about achieving, you know, the objectives they are putting. Of course, with all the realistic part, but inspire people. Look at this. One is telling people what to do. The other thing is inspire people because maybe you're not gonna be seeing them. That's the reality now. So people have to have their own criteria and you have to inspire them to work by themselves without you seeing them. If you're there all the time, I mean, it's, that's, if I may, it's easy. But now this virtual thing that we are going to be having to, you know, in the near future, and we're already experiencing that, it's very important. So these leaders have the inspirational part. The other one I like very much is the words, intellectually stimulating. These guys stimulate people intellectually. It's amazing. So it's, it's, they, they challenge people. They are, uh, put as scenarios. They ask questions. They make people think. If you make people think, you know, a people, gets, people get to uh, their highest potential. If you keep telling people what to do, and then you are not there no more to tell them what to do, then, I mean, this, this is not, not, not the way. So it's very important to be able to stimulate intellect, intel, in, stimulate intellect to yourself. That's, of course, one of the benefits of, of the school uh, that we are having many discussions over there. But it's, 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 it's very challenging, very good. By the way, putting pressure is different than challenging. Put in, let me put you pressure. For instance, if I may, uh, Tadeya, if I may, Tadeya, if by July 31st, the results are not better, you and me today are gonna be having a different conversation. Then today, immediately what she does is gonna be calling uh, her husband, her family, the headhunters, and trying to find somewhere else because she sees that she's part of a problem, right? But if I tell Tadeya, Tadeya, if by July 31st, um, the company or the school is not doing better in that rate, I mean, uh, we're gonna be having a, a problem, a tough situation. Tell me, what can I do for you? In which way I can help you? Um, do you have any idea, any suggestions? What, what then today uh, feels that she's already part of the solution and she will not have time to call her husband or to call her family or to call any, any headhunter because she's part of the solution. She wants to be part of the solution. So remember that it's not the same putting pressure. And a lot of times in my culture, you know, put a lot of pressure. And I've seen many, many difference when I see groups of people placing challenges. So challenge people, don't just put pressure on them. And the fourth uh, dimension is individually considerate. These guys, these uh, transformational leaders are individually considerate. They recognize the needs and abilities of each member of the team. They treat them as individuals and they develop them. So nowadays it's about developing a business and developing people and talent. So try to be as the better you can in those four dimensions and try to get around you in your company, your ecosystem, you know, as many of these dimensions, because I tell you, these dimensions will make a difference according to the scientifics. Good, so let's go for the second concept of this life. It's the I the for immediacy. Um, we have the benefit of having very, very good consulting firms that are providing us with lots of information and sharing with us all their reflections about many times in life. And nowadays, during this coronavirus uh, uh, facts, you know, I, I went to, through this report from McKinsey, which I thank them for sharing that with everybody. And they were talking about immediacy. And I like it very much when a company like them are able to put in five bullet points something that I think are crucial in our sequential doing, uh, sequential thinking of doing things. The first thing they're saying, yes, we have to do things now. Let's go and think about the workforce. Let's think about the workforce. How are they doing? Are they healthy? I want them to work in from home. Do they have the enough devices to work remotely? Yes, boom, taking care of them, fantastic. Second one. Supply chain, think about 
you know, think, think about a food company. A food company, you need to, to go to the fields, pick up the product, you know, do some transformation, take it to the supermarket. How, you know, which part of the supply chain I have to reduce, I have to increase, I have to do more, more of, less of. Then customers, there are customers that are closed. You know, mainly in Spain, of course, you know, now in Slovenia, you're getting back to normal, but in Spain, we still have one month to go at least uh, to get back to normal. There are customers that are open. Some restaurants are not open. Some, hotel, some hotels are not open. Supermarkets are open. So understand because we are servicing the community and we are servicing our customers. We need to understand them. Then financial stress. We need to understand how are we doing with our cash flow? Are we getting revenues? Are we having expenses? I mean, we have to manage that. Those are startups that were able to close the round before the coronavirus thing, they are better off. Those are startups that they could not close the round, you know, because of the coronavirus, they're going to they're be facing, you know, a tougher situation. And then I like it very much, the operating nerve. Not a, not a committee or commission, a nerve. Nerve thing giving me tension, positive tension about, come on, we have to be ready to react. So. These are these five recommendations for immediacy now for you. Another thing is, I think it's time to support. I love very much this picture that you know, shows us support, care, and cooperate with people. I think it's now time, we'll, um, I'm gonna be talking later about Simon Sinek, but I think it's not just time for individuals, it's, it's time for community. It's not, I like to add, it's not time for the company, it's time for uh, the sector, the, the game, you know, it's, uh, I, I like him very much this thought. And I, in one of his books, he's saying, it's not time for countries, it's time for humanity. So we have to support people. We have to take care, to take care. We have to take care of ourselves and then do that work of cooperation. I think it's a great opportunity that we have in front of us. So let me ask you the second question of the, of the session. Which do you think is the biggest challenge for the new future? Write it down and Tadeja will share that with me in, in a second. So let's go for the third letter, that's F, just to get the most from these 60 minutes. Uh, future is about future and the day after will come. This sun will come, yes. And we'll get back to a new situation. And many businesses, not just reopening the business, but it's about reimagining the business because things are gonna be different in a way. And we learn from that. And we know that now that com companies that were better off in terms of e-commerce or knowing the consumers on online, uh, they're doing better. But those companies that neglected the, the online or tried to get the traffic of their consumers into their stores, they're having a, far, a hard time now. Those restaurants that know the name of their consumers, they can connect them with them easily. But those restaurants that they were not paying attention to the consumers they were having in the restaurant, they don't know who they are. So a day after will come and will be shifts in many fronts, human behaviors, industry dynamics, technology, regulation, macroeconomic, geopolitics. So we have to pay attention to that as the invisible hand and then do something with our visible hand. I like very much the thought from Larry Page. He's the founder of Google. And look at what he shares with everybody. The main thing that has come companies to fail, in my view, is that they miss the future. So let's not miss the future. And the future has come very fast. So we have to, we have to cope with it. And one of the, I'm not going to be, you know, giving you too many, too many uh, grabs or analytics, but just a few thoughts. This is a great concept to have all of for you to, uh, to have in your mind. Of course, many of you know it but I want to reinforce, reinforce the fact that this is very useful. We have to have this pestle thing in our mind. The, how our politics are gonna be influencing the future, how economy is gonna be, the social, the technology, the environment, the legal, how is it gonna be? Based on that, how is it gonna change? How, 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 how things are gonna be different in the coming future? Which things I'm gonna be doing differently myself? Which things I'm gonna be changing myself? So which, the, in which way I'm going to be reducing the uncertainty in a, you know, with some activities, actions I'm gonna take place. So put that pestle you know, um, word in your, in your head and be aware of all these things that influence the environment, the ecosystem where you're gonna be developing your activity. Here we have Euro Monitor International uh, 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 regarding top 10 global consumer trends in 2019. So you know, way, you know, it, it, 2019 now sounds like 
far, far away, but it's just a few months, five months ago. And these guys at that time, we were talking, they were uh, defining the 10 global consumer trends. And let's have a quick look at that. They were talking about age and agnostic. We want to be as young as we can. Back to basics, consu conscious consumer. And I just highlight, highlighted four of them. One is digitally together. I mean, we want to be connected remotely. And well, it was in 2019. Now it's a need. It's a need. We don't do that. Do that. Let me go to the ones that I, I, I highlighted. Finding JOMO, it's like the joy of missing out. It means the joy of staying home. So see all these last mile delivery happening that thanks to these guys, we have been having food or some products in our houses when we were not allowed to go out. So, but it was accelerated. Let me go, I want it now. You know, this immediacy that, you know, consumers would see, we'll see which thing changed or, or, or not. And learner living now more than ever, we've been with our families or by ourselves in our houses. So. One of the things that we have to be aware of the trends and let you think about the trends that in your community, in your area, will be for you to make your decisions about the business. So we have the benefit of having all these companies use all this information to make your own decision. What's, how is the future gonna be look, look like? It's gonna be more of that or some of these things will change. We got this report two months ago from Boston Consulting Group. They were just highlighting based on a survey which businesses were going to be, you know, the consumers were planning to spend more at and which business uh, consumers were planning to spend less at. So as you can see in the, in the green side, we have organic foods, preventive health care, household care, uh, vitamins, savings, packaged goods, pet, pet supplies, all these things that we already know and we already seen. And on the right side, more challenging for luxury travel, outwear, restaurants. I would say that the guys on the right side have to reinvent and reimagine the future in a way to make us to, to, to fall in love with their products again, you know, the sooner the better. And I may say that the rights, the guys on the, on the green side are more thinking about, you know, accelerating the, 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 the wind that is blowing in their favor. So how they accelerate that, you know, in their favor. So, you know, we have all these studies, go for them, talk to McKinsey or at, at checking the internet about McKinsey, Boston Consulting, and get your image or your picture how the future is gonna be. I like very much, and I think it's very appropriate for these days to remind us that adaptability is a great competitive advantage. So how adaptable we are. And I like very much the study, the article, the paper from these two guys, Reeves and Daimler, talking about learning how to do new things is the new, the new thing. So our ability to cope with change, new things. Come on, let me, give me change, give me change. The more change you give me, the more, the more, the more confident I'm gonna be getting with change. But if I, I, I stop at, at accepting change, you know, it doesn't help. Here in Barcelona, you know that we are very fond of football and I like to make the comparison with football. In football, you play the ball. If you don't like the ball, you don't, don't play football because you're not gonna be enjoying that. So in business, the ball is like problems, changes, uncertainty, uh, complexity, uh, tough situations, uh, of course, launching of products. If you don't like that, I mean, don't stay in business because we have to play the ball. We have to be comfortable, you know, and of course the ball may have, a, may be a, a great opportunity or great threat. So we have to practice and play the ball more often and the more often you play the ball, more comfortable we become and then more convincing and then we have been better we are better off at, at, at facing the future so learning and practicing and learning how to do new things it's 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 this certainty this is a certainty and let me go for the the e and before going that let me check with Tadeya, which is the questions that um, she's saying yes the challenges uncertainty resistance to change how to so the resistance I, I let me suggest you something. Don't be you the one to resist change. I mean, be the, the next change agent in your company. I mean, it's something that we cannot avoid. Don't be the old guard that we, we try to avoid progress happening in our company. Social distancing, that's, that's why we share that transformational leadership. If I may, we need to be close to our people. 
be very close to my people. Let me share you an example. My, my, when I was traveling my many times to the United States and sometimes being 15 days away from home and not having the opportunity to see my parents here in Barcelona, I remember I was calling them and I was saying, I'm sorry because I couldn't see you last week and uh, I'm going to be coming to see you in the coming week. And I felt kind of bad because I was not having the opportunity to see my parents as often as I wanted. And I remember my parents, Miguel, don't worry. We don't see each other, but we feel you. And I remember that sentence so, so deep in my heart that I think that I'd like to share that with you because we need to do that with our people. Maybe you don't see them, but we need them to feel us. And the feeling is that to making a, a phone call and, and to sending emails, make sure that they feel that they are not alone and they are, they are there doing something good and profitable and they are contributing more than before that maybe in the corridor in the office, you could say hello to somebody and now you're not seeing, not, or you were not having that kind of thing. Try to learn from the situation and get your people to feel you, that you care for them and you're close. Uh, some challenges, new regulations, yes, human approach, global, okay, uh, versus local, good. Good balance uh, between work and private life. How many companies have learned that we can work from home and we can deliver and sometimes better than being in the office in the middle of so many meetings. So let's learn from that and let's grow from that. When using so much video conference, relationships and value. Yes, we have to understand and we have to control our calendar and not to get caught 10, in 10 meetings in one day because we need space for ourselves as well. So let me go for the digital part because I think it's another key drivers, driver for this new world. This is a survey that I've, I got in 2019, okay? So before the coronavirus, but see here that Percentage of CEOs naming the following as the top strategic priority for the years to come. And just one third of them, we're talking about IT as being a top priority. And just 8% of them, we're talking about innovation being the top priority. I'm pretty sure that after the coronavirus, IT is gonna be in top, you know, on top of the mind, in, in, in the mind of many CEOs because we need to be more, Technologically, you know, we have to embrace technology. We have to, we, there's no doubt we have to accelerate that. I'm thinking about retail businesses, supermarkets, some retail stores. They didn't, they didn't speed up enough the online thing. And now they are suffering more than before. So, I mean, it's there an innovation. I mean, being creative, innovate things, reimagine things, you know, reinvent how to do with the business understand the consumers, paying attention to my customers, adapting my business, by the way, this is the company and this is the business. The company remains and maybe the business, they change or you have to close some of them or you have to open some of them, but always there are opportunities there. But, you know, it's important that, you know, we, we, we don't play the emotions there. Let's play with the facts. In regard to talking about digital, I know that the president of Estonia was in the school in 2019, and that's why I felt uh, like sharing that with you as well. Uh, pay attention to Estonia. It's amazing. This country, uh, 1.4 uh, million inhabitants, you know, even smaller than Slovenia, if I may. These guys have got the mindset of being digital. Estonia is the world's first country to also function as a digital service. They define themselves as the new digital nation. My message here is not, of course, Estonia, they're doing a great job, but it's not about resources. It's not about having money. They don't have oil. They don't have uh, gold. They just have talent. And it's, it's, it's a matter of mindset. It's, it's, you, we all can be Estonia in a, in a way. We have different circumstances, different realities, but the reality, these guys were not rich and we're not, you know, special, but they decided and they were focused to become digital. Let's, let's, let's be digital. Digital, we have e-commerce, e-leadership, e-management, e-learning, e-coaching, e-games. E-games are growing like crazy. E-health will have to happen. Many hospitals in many countries have collapsed because of the, you know, of the e-health not being, uh, tech enough so of course these things will come in the future uh, all right so um may i ask you uh, may i ask uh today uh, share with me some of the q a's that probably you've been writing down during the session 
because now we've gone through the life, L, L for leadership, I for immediacy, F for future, and E for digital. Thank you, today. I'm reading here that message from Nevenka. Thank you very much. We have noticed an increase in honesty and transparency in communication between leaders and their employees during the corona. Good. Honesty and transparency, name of the game. I remember uh, a few days ago, somebody asking me, do I have to tell people that things are gonna be better if I don't feel like? No, share what you feel, share what you feel. Show the world through your lenses and then, you know, and, and, and be close to them, so great. There's a level of vulnerability that leaders are starting to show during these hard times that's helping them to connect more. Strongly employees are responding more positively to these changes, great. Do you think leaders will continue to lead with such honesty and transparency all beyond the crisis? I think we should. I think we should. We've learned and we've discovered something that being closer to people is nicer and people respect you more and they follow you and you love you more and they want to be with you because you're having a hard time. And come on. Yeah, of course. So to your question, uh, Nevenka, yes, uh, leaders will continue should continue with that and we have to police ourselves and make sure that the leaders that we have around us you know behave that like this honesty and transparency so thank you very much for the question let me set another one here eric is asking miguel what about those that you cannot stimulate or push to follow these times it is right to let go at this point of time of course of course i mean i liked very much and you heard the best it with apples there all right you have apples you have one apple that is not motivated it's not contributing i mean if you keep that apple in that basket and a lot of times i like to refer to nature because how would nature behave and then it's like normally in our organizations we behave apple is there it's getting bad if you leave the apple over there then the other apples will get bad we know that that's nature but if you take that apple from that basket and you plant it somewhere else, you, that apple may flourish. So that person is not in the right place. So try to find a place for that person and have a, you know, a, a, an adult conversation. There are different positions in the company, but at certain levels, of course, I mean, you cannot let, you know, something that disrupting this kind of climate mindset that you need for your company, because if not, the market will take the decision for you. So move the apple, plant it, plant it somewhere else, find, a, play, a place where that apple fits more. And, you know, I've seen apples flourish at. So the, 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 the worst thing I've seen is to keeping people there because of the sake, no, 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 come on. Either they, they follow or you have to change that. All right, so thank you very much for your question. Another question here that we have here, Silva, do you believe keeping the positive mindset in difficult times is also very important more than ever? More than ever, I can have I can have a passive mind when everything goes smooth. I'm sailing on the sea, on the sea, fantastic. But when it's troublesome, I have to have the positive mindset. I'm positive. I I may I like more to talk about optimism. Optimism, a positive. You can be positive and negative. You have negative situations, positive. But I like very much to think, believing that things are gonna get better. And believe me, why? Because you're gonna be part of the solution. You're gonna be putting all your effort to help you know, the company, the, the, net, the ecosystem to get better. We are, you know, we are playing, we are players of that. Alice, uh, hi, Jado, referring to our discussion with Alessandra Campagna, how do you find a person that works, that, how do you find a person that works best under pressure? Challenge those people, challenge them. Put them to the limit. If in sports is easy, if, if you get somebody running at 12 seconds and you want that person, challenge that person. You can make it in 11. You can make it that. You, you can make it better. So that kind of conversation, words become reality. The kind of conversation you are having with people. So put, get, uh, how do you say, put um, projects to people, experiences, make them to say, okay, give them something that you are giving that person resources to perform. Never give a project to a person if that person doesn't have the resources because this is uh, one of the worst things. But give opportunity to that person. As general managers, if I may, we are, this is the roof of a house. Here we are the general manager here. Our responsibility, sometimes we don't develop our people because we are scared about these people 
I mean, pushing up to the roof and we not having answers or having, you know, possibilities to, to do better. Because our responsibility as leaders is open the roof, open the spaces, open the territory, the pitch. Come on. It's not like a sport that you have the lines over there. You can expand the lines of your business, the game. And when you have talent, give them challenges and enjoy these challenges. You have talent, make them use the talent. And you, you'll see that. Put them under pressure. If the pressure is not there, put it. In, in, in terms of, and I, you know that I like more the word challenge than pressure. So put them under challenge. Thank you very much. And then I have here, Murat is asking me uh, about the CEO priority show 2019. Uh, how cha change do you think? I think digital, digital, you have to algorithm. When we're talking about uncertainty, let's think for a second. Those companies are making a difference. Our companies are using numbers and data to reduce uncertainty, to forecast the behaviors of consumers and customers in the future. So I see CEOs more talking with these guys, uh, software engineers, and taking responsibility for that. Like in the past, you know, we added the marketing discussion with the CEO. Now, the technology, I think, is going to be the data, how I use the data, the algorithm. I like it very much that one company was placing, I don't remember the name of the company, but was appointing a chief, uh, a chief uh, algorithm officer, not just digital. Let me go for anonymous attendee. He said, hi, Professor, what about competition at the market? Should we be more with our competitors on the market? Uh, or to choose more? Yes. Let me share one final thought. I don't like that much the word competition no more. The alt economy, we were doing everything together against the others. In the new economy, we have to pay attention who can do that better than us. I like to, the expression, instead of talking about sectors and industries, talking more about games. Not thinking about sector. Go beyond the sector. Go beyond the industry. Because Amazon is getting in your industry. So, you know, the industry, you know, it's the name, it's, 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 it's out fashion, if I may. Talk about games and players. And some players might be rivals. But some players might be alliances and joint ventures, and you can do things together with them. You cannot agree on prices and territory and so forth, but you can do in the back office, we can manufacture together, we can distribute together. Yes, to your questions, uh, Anonymous. Yes, let's think about games, what game you're playing, uh, in which game you're playing, and which players you have around to either work for them, but at the same time, I mean, it's more about, it's more about, uh, company and the, 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 it, it's more about the sector and the game and make it better for all of us. Okay, guys, let me finalize that. Thank you very much for your question. Let me, uh, let me share one thought. I found this book that it's the Infinity Game from Simon Sinek. I just found it in March and uh, I was traveling and uh, this guy, you know, it's, uh, it's talking about the universe of possibilities. As I said, countries, uh, humanity instead of countries. As I said, sectors instead of competitors, uh, community instead of individuals. I strongly recommend, you know, to if you want to ins be inspired about infinite game to play, go for that. And, you know, my final slide is that picture of uh, that lady with uh, that smile, because it's, I think that we can smile, even though we are wearing masks, we can smile with our, you know, with our eyes. And I think it's something that uh, we, we have to do. So even though in the hard times, I mean, let's enjoy life. Let's get the most, we are, we are alive. We have, uh, you, know, our, our, uh, you know, our environment. Let's get the most of that. And so, you know, remember that we are the visible hand of our life and go live and make a better world. Thank you very much.